Hi everyone, this is Abdul from Pythonist. NumPy is the de facto standard for the scientific computing in Python. It extends Python with a flexible multi dimensional array that allows fast and concise mathematical calculations. Let's try to explore this amazing library. In the previous video, we have talked about the importance of mathematical operations and understand how vectors and metrics can help us to optimize those operations but at the cost of some problems. As we discussed about the memory fragmentation and the performance degradation, let's try to understand how NumPy can help us to solve these problems and boost the performance of our code. We will cover this thing in various phases. In the very first phase, we will try to understand the basics of NumPy. Then we will discuss how NumPy can solve the memory fragmentation and optimize the performance of our code. Let's start with the first one, basics of NumPy. The NumPy library revolves around its multidimensional array object. These arrays are collections of elements of the same data type. This fundamental restriction allows NumPy to pack the data in a way that allows for high performance mathematical operations. Let's try to explore it by writing some code. To use it, of course, we have to install it first. You can simply run a pip command to install it as pip install numpy. That's great, we are good to go. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the creation of array using pure python and using numpy. So the very first thing is that we have to import this library as import numpy as np. So let's define an array using python. So I will say pi underscore array equal to and I will add the number from 1 to 9. Just keep in mind that it's a list. To create an array in NumPy, we have to call its array method. So I will say np underscore array equal to np dot array and inside that I will pass a list with the numbers from 1 to 9. Let's print out both of these arrays using Python's formatted string. And you can see the result here. Just notice the difference between both of these print results. The Python's array just print out all of these elements separately, separated by a comma. But in the case of a NumPy array, it has been just displayed the entire array as a one chunk. So just keep in mind this thing, this difference for the understanding of later discussion. Okay, that's great. Let's understand some of the very important attributes of array object before making a discussion about available functions. And these are the range and shape and reshape. The numpy range function allows the creation of a simple list of numbers by prompting the start, stop and step within the function. While shape is another attribute for a numpy array, we just simply returns the shape of that particular matrix. And the reshape is a method that will change the dimensions of the matrix into a new dimension that specified. By doing so, we will pass a tuple of any dimension with the same number of elements as the original matrix. So let's define an array using these attributes. Then we will talk about other available functions. So I will say as numbers equal to np.range and I will pass number let's say 50 and dot reshape 5 and 10. So it will create a numpy array with the 50 numbers and reshape it into the 5 rows and 10 columns matrix. So let's explore some of the important functions and our attributes we can perform on this array. So the first one is NDIM. It provides the number of axes or dimensions of the array. So if I simply say that numbers.ndim, it will return out the dimensions of this array, which is 2. And the second attribute is the shape. It provides the dimensions of the array. It is similar to the previous function but this function really provides the shape so when we just call this function it will return 5 and 10. So this is that the 5 rows and 10 columns. It means it is just providing the information about the shape in the context of matrix. The next one is the size attribute. The size function provides the total number of elements of the array. This is equal to the product of the elements of shape. So if we call this attribute on this numbers array, it will just simply print 50 because we have 50 numbers in our numbers array. The next one is the dtype. This is an object describing the type of the elements in the array. One can create or specify dtypes using standard Python types. 
NumPy provides additional types like numpy.int32, numpy.in16, and numpy.float62 are a few examples. So if I call this attribute dot d type on this numbers array, it will return in tg32. And the next one is the item size. It provides the size in bytes of each element of the array. So this element will print us the four. Because we are using the int32 data types, so when we see that eight bits in one byte, so it will be eight into four will be 32. So that's why the item size will be four. That's great, we have learned the basics of NumPy. So these are the very basic concepts about the NumPy, how we can define an array and different attributes and functions of the array object. This is not a NumPy specific tutorial, but we are discussing how NumPy can solve different optimization problems. Okay, let's come to the second phase where we are going to discuss different problems a NumPy can solve. So in the previous video, we have talked about the memory fragmentation, which we found using perf tool. In order to deal with this problem, we must find a package that can efficiently vectorize operations. Luckily, NumPy has all of the features we need. It stores data in contiguous chunks of memory and supports vectorize operations on its data. As a result, any arithmetic we do on NumPy arrays happens in chunks without us having to explicitly loop over each element. Not only does this make it much easier to do matrix arithmetic this way, but it is also faster. We can understand it much better by making its comparison with the pure Python implementations. Let's write some functions to calculate the norm, which is actually the magnitude of a vector using different approaches. So let's first calculate it using pure python's list. So I will define a function as norm underscore square underscore list and pass a vector. Just keep in mind this vector is simply a list. Then I will define a variable as norm and initialize it with zero and run a for loop as for v in vector. Then inside this one I will say norm plus equal to v multiplied by v. This is how we actually just have to find the product and just sum of all of the products and it becomes a magnitude. Okay, let's write another function for the same calculation but using the list comprehensions. So I will define a function as norm underscore square underscore list underscore comp and I will pass a vector once again. And inside this function, I will simply return the sum of the products of all of the values inside the list. Now let's utilize the numpy for this calculation. So I will define another function as norm underscore square underscore np and once again pass the factor. Then inside that we simply return np dot sum and inside that we can re simply return vector multiplied by vector. Okay, so if we run all of these functions for a list of 1 million numbers and just calculate the time by using the time it module, the very first function, which is norm underscore square underscore list, just run the 1000 loops for 1.16 milliseconds per loop. A norm underscore square underscore list underscore comp function will run the 1000 loops for 913 microseconds per loop. And the numpy function, which is norm underscore square underscore np, will run for 10,000 loops and 13.9 microsecond per loop. The simpler NumPy code runs 37.54 times faster than the norm underscore square underscore list function and 29.5 times faster than the optimized Python list comprehension. The difference in speed between the pure Python looping method and the list comprehension shows the benefits of doing more calculation behind the scene rather than explicitly doing it in your Python code. By performing calculations using Python's already built-in machinery, we get the speed of the native C code that Python is built on. This is also pretty the same reasoning behind why we have such a drastic speed up in the NumPy code. Instead of using the very generalized list structure, we have a very finely tuned and specially built object for dealing with arrays of numbers. In addition to more lightweight and specialized machinery, the NumPy object also gives us memory locality and vectorized operations, which are incredibly important when dealing with numerical computations. 
The CPU is exceedingly fast. Most of the time, getting it the data it needs faster is the best way to optimize code quickly. The pure Python function takes 1 into 10 raised to power 11 instructions for the CPU, while the NumPy version takes 3 into 10 raised to power 9 instructions. In addition, the pure Python versions have approximately 80% cache MISs, while NumPy has 55% cache MISs. In our norm underscore square underscore NumPy code, when doing vector multiplied by vector, there is an implied loop that NumPy will take care of. The implied loop is the same loop we have explicitly written out in other examples. Loop over all items in vector, multiplying each item by itself. However, since we tell NumPy to do this instead of explicitly writing it out in our Python code, it can take advantage of all the optimizations it wants. In the background, NumPy has very optimized C code that has been specifically made to take the advantage of any vectorization the CPU has enabled. In addition, NumPy arrays are represented sequentially in memory as low-level numerical types, which gives them the same space requirements as array object from the array module. As an extra bonus, we can reformulate the problem as a dot product. So let's first write the code, then I will explain it. So for that, I will define another function as norm underscore square underscore np underscore dot. Then once again, we will pass the vector list. Then inside this function, we will simply return the dot product of the vector list. And if we calculate the time for this function by passing the vector list of 1 million numbers, it will perform the 10,000 loops and 21.8 microseconds per loop. So this gives us a single operation to calculate the value we want as opposed to the first, taking the product of the two vectors and then summing up, as you can see here in the code. Okay, so if I plot a graph for all of these functions to understand the performance of these functions visually, you will see that the norm underscore square underscore np underscore dot outperforms all the others by quite a substantial margins. This is thanks to the specialization of the function and because we don't need to store intermediate value of vector multiplied by vector as we did in the NumPy function. That's how NumPy can solve the memory fragmentation problem and boost the performance. But just keep in mind one downfall of NumPy's optimization of vector operations is that it only occurs on one operation at a time. That is to say, when we are doing the operations A multiplied by B plus C with NumPy vectors, first the entire A multiplied by B operation completes, and the data stored in a temporary vector, then this new vector is added with C. However, there are many modules that can help with this. NumexPR is a module that can take an entire vector expression and compile it into very efficient code that is optimized to minimize the cache MISES and temporary space used. In addition, the expression can utilize multiple CPU cores and specialized instructions for the Intel chips to maximize the speedup. This is not the topic of this video. We will discuss this module in the later videos while working on the concurrency and the CPU optimization. Okay, let's come to word the conclusion of both of these videos. Looking back on our optimizations, we seem to have taken two main routes. Reducing the time taken to get the data to the CPU and reducing the amount of work that the CPU had to do. We also learned more about the importance of data locality and how important simply getting data to the CPU is. CPU caches can be quite complicated and often it is best to allow the various mechanisms designed to optimize them take care of the issue. However, understanding what is happening and doing all that is possible to optimize how memory is handled can make all the difference. Another important lesson concerns the use of external libraries. Python is fantastic for its ease of use and readability, which allow you to write and debug code fast. However, Tuning performance done to the external libraries is essential. These external libraries can be extremely fast, 
because they can be written in lower level languages. But since the interface with Python, you can simply still write code that use them quickly. And one last point about optimization is that a lot of care must be taken to make sure that the optimizations you make generalize to different computers. In addition, when making these optimizations, it is incredibly important to consider other developers and how the changes will affect the readability of your code. That's it for this video. If you like this video, just thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.